So in this video, I'll show you how to do thematic analysis with Scrintel, which is a software predominantly used for organizing your work and for mind mapping. But as I showed you in the first video, we can also use it for uh, qualitative data analysis and specifically for thematic analysis. So in the first video, I showed you how to create initial codes. I explained the functions, the functionality of Scrintel, and I showed you that we can uh, create these cards as well as, as well as link certain cards to certain uh, transcript. So that's basically what we did in the first video. Of course, if you haven't watched it, uh, I strongly encourage you to watch it before watching this video. So in this video, we'll uh, basically continue where we ended the first video. In the first video, I uh, showed you how to create a new board. I moved all our initial codes to that new board and explained that now we're, uh, we're going to organize these codes in the process uh, known as focus coding. So basically trying to uh, develop a coding framework that's more focused so that we can later turn it into themes. And that's what we'll continue to do in this video. The good news is that we're almost there. So actually, I only have a few functions, a few things uh, left to show you because what we'll do in this focus coding uh, stage is pretty much the same as uh, what you need for your themes. So there is not that much uh, left to learn. So um, as you remember, I started to organize uh, these codes a little bit. So we had we used colors for our hypothetical study, uh, which is uh, a study of uh, experiences, lived experiences of uh, m this multicultural uh, crew on fishing boats. We wanted to know what their experiences are. So so everything that makes these experiences good ones or memorable ones, how they overcome challenges, so all sorts of things. So we had. Uh, different colors that we used for different transcripts, yellow and green. And I started to organize uh, these codes. So here, as you can see, I kind of uh, organized them a little bit more since the last video. You can see that there are different suggestions uh, that they made. There are different uh, ways to overcome challenges. There are different challenges. There are different benefits. So uh, as I explained in many other videos, uh, at this stage of focus coding, or some people call it axial coding, doesn't really matter. So there are six stages frameworks by Brown and Clark. They don't use any of these words, but they still talk about refining codes and uh, and organizing code. So that's what's happening. So the first thing that happens at this stage is that we want to organize them, like I said, into groups, into general groups uh, of codes that have you know to do with some similar experiences. And the second thing that happens at this stage is always to clean up within the groups. And by clean up, uh, what I usually mean and what is you know, the main thing that we usually have to do, whether you're using Scrintel or maybe Envivo or any other software, is that more often than not, you will have some duplicates, some duplicates within each group, uh, which means that you have different codes that you created that may have slightly different or even or very similar wording, but basically they describe the same thing. So you can see here, for example, we, we have language challenges, we have linguistic challenges, we have initial linguistic challenges. So what happened uh, here is that I was coding, I didn't really want to stop and wonder whether I already have uh, some some similar code, I simply created a new one. So rather than trying to find, for example, uh, this code, linguistic challenges when I was obviously coding the same interview transcript, you can see the color is the same, it's yellow. I just created a new one, initial linguistic challenges, because I couldn't be bothered. I didn't want to just basically waste time uh, looking for these. And I never do, whether I use uh, this or any other software. Uh, I, I always prefer to save as much time as possible to be as effective as efficient as possible, which means it's better to create a new code and later clean it up than waste all that time trying to find these older codes. So uh, regardless, what happens is that we have these duplicates. So now, uh, instead, we want to have one code, right? We just want to have one code, let's say language or linguistic challenges. So what we'll do uh, first is create a new card, create a new card, I'll call it linguistic challenges. It's just going to be an empty card. So uh, what will happen now? Uh, we want to change the color. We want to change the color. So let me just change it to, for example, to uh, to pink. And now we can't just. We don't want to just uh, delete all these three codes. Why do we not want to delete these codes? Because 
as you remember, uh, these cows, these colors indicate where they come from. So if we go back to our board, fishing boat cruise, you can see that we have different colors for different transcripts. That's the whole point. We have to know, we have to know where they come from. So now, if I just create this new one and I call linguistic challenges, what will happen is uh, later I'll be, if I want to find a quote, for example, from the data, how do I know which one it comes from? So ideally, I I want to keep these original codes. I want to keep the original codes, but just indicate for my future, you know, my future, my focus codes and future themes potentially, uh, indicate this new name for all of these three codes, but I do want to keep them. I want to keep them to know where they come from. So I can either do this and just keep them somewhere, you know, somewhere near this new code, or I can actually link them. I can link them. So let me just do this. We can actually link them so if you click on it and then click on one of these you can link them to this new code just one more left just sometimes doesn't want to work what i did here for example i just created a new one by accident uh, but you see the point you know what i'm doing let me just try again yeah so i'm just linking them to show that uh, this is a new code this is how i will be referring to this code but originally these three codes made up this code. So, so if I have to, I can move it now as a, as a new code together. But if I have to, at some point, find linguistic challenges, I know where it comes from. I can see, for example, language challenges, and I can find, or I can see linguistic, initial linguistic challenges, whatever it is I need to find. And here on the right, you can remember that we have these links. So initial linguistic challenges, if I click on it, it gives me that card. And then if I scroll down, it shows me where it appeared. It appeared in interview one, so I can click on it again. I can open it on full screen, and I can just scroll through it. And once you hover your mouse over these uh, extract, it shows me how I coded it. So it shows me, for example, linguistic challenges here. So that's that's important. Like I said, this is crucial because that's the whole point of of this whole work, uh, arguably, of, of thematic analysis, of analyzing the data. You want to create these codes, but later you have to be able to find the quotes because that's what you're going to use as evidence in your report, in your results or findings chapter. And this process would uh, take place and would happen for whatever duplicates you can find. And there will be more. I'm not sure if I have more here, but probably there is something. Uh, let me just see cultural i may have different one i have different uh, cultural as i can see here uh, cultural differences challenge cultural cultural differences amplify difficult situations um, there is a couple of things about basically communication so if i if i later decide maybe to merge all sorts of challenges that have to do with communication in one way or another whether it's verbal or uh, nonverbal again i may create you know something that's more inclusive i may just call everything communication challenges if i have lots of challenges i may come to conclusion that i want to just have let's say cultural communication and some some very general names for challenges in that case again i would create something uh, more inclusive i would call it communication challenges and again make sure to indicate just like i did here where these come from so so that's basically what happens that's what happens at the stage of focus coding and then whenever this is ready whenever i'm ready i cleaned up i don't have duplicates i have everything uh, clearly uh, labeled uh, once i'm ready i would just take all of it again select it and just create a new board create a new board and this time i would call it let's say thematic framework and this is the final stage where i may just do some more work so so whatever it is that i decide to do maybe i want to have one general theme uh you know this one overarching theme that i would call for example you know challenges and benefits or something like that and then within it uh, we would have different challenges and ways to overcome them whatever it is that i decide it's not no point for me to try to uh, to now actually construct it because the, the functions will be exactly the same of what I have been showing. So I don't want that video to be as long as the first one, but there is no other 
uh, there are no other options that I will be using here because I will be uh, again uh, at this stage of creating these these final themes. I would again be creating these new bo uh, new, uh, new boards or uh, new cards rather, indicating them with a different color just to know that this is kind of a final product. Uh, and then grouping these initial, these older codes around. So that's exactly the same process. And regarding the, let's say, the more uh, uh, the aspect of the logic and the rationale and everything uh, behind creating themes and what themes we can create, that's a completely different story. It's not uh, really about the functionality of Scrintle. And for that, I do have a separate video. So please watch it now if you're not sure how to pro uh, proceed from this stage of focus coding to uh, creating themes. For now, this is it. I hope that you learned something new. There is a link under the video that you can follow to learn more about Scrintle. Do let me know if you want to know anything do let me know if you've used it i know some of you have because some of you commented under the video so do let me know how you're using it because it, it does seem like it's a software it's a platform that can be used in so many different ways i also have a video in which i show you uh, how to organize literature with Scrinto. so let me know if you want uh, me to record anything else in relation to this platform like the video if you learned something new and share it if you know people who can benefit from this instruction